YouTube. Welcome back to the channel. I'm your host TKK and we are back with another video. Thanks for joining me guys. Timestamps in the description. They should also be in the bar down below counting the timer for this video. Okay, we're going to get right into this thing. Let me explain to you exactly what you can expect from this video. We're going to be talking about gaming, PC gaming specifically. I've got nothing against consoles and we will be doing some content on the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X. But today, right now, we're talking about PC gaming because this television that's in front of us is, as you know from the title, 2023 Quantum OLED Samsung S95C. This is an amazing panel, guys. An amazing panel. So let's jump right into some of the settings here. All right, so we're gonna go right into the display settings. Actually, we're gonna go to NVIDIA control panel for this right here. I am using an NVIDIA graphics card, RTX 3090 to be specific. We'll take a look at the setup and everything. Again, timestamps down below. So the TV is gonna start off just like many other panels when you connect a gaming PC at a default resolution of 4K. This is gonna be 3840 by 2160, and it's gonna be at 30 Hertz. You've got two separate resolutions that you can do here when you're PC gaming. You've got your TV resolution. And since Windows has updated later in 10 and 11, it no longer says TV, but it used to say TV. Um, and then when you go down, you're going to see PC. You want to go right to where you see the native. If you don't do that, you're going to be you're locked at pretty much all of these different options. So you've got all the way from 23 hertz to 60 hertz. None of those are going to be what I'm looking forward to having. Um, if this was an AK panel, 60 is obviously what I'd be targeting because that's as high as HDMI 2.1 can push us. So we're going to go down to 3840 by 2160 native. And as you can see, this thing immediately sees 144 hertz, unlike the 2022 Samsung S95B, where you had to do a custom resolution and some workarounds to get that active. This thing can jump right into it. So you now have 100 hertz, 120 hertz which is something we had last year. And now we have 144 Hertz out the gate. So we'll click that. We'll click apply. TV is going to take a second to catch that signal from the gaming PC to register everything, to make sure that you got a graphics card that is able to handle and process this. And let me tell you guys, unfortunately, my camera is shooting this in 4K at 30 Hertz, 30 frames per second. But I am getting butter smooth 144 Hertz. This is just absolutely amazing, guys. Another setting you want to go to is go ahead and set up G-Sync. All right, so two options. Option number one, you're going to go from apply following settings. You want to click both enable G-Sync and G-Sync compatible. And below, you want to toggle this where it says enable for window and full screen. This is going to make sure that no matter how you play your game, be it you're playing border, borderless, you're going to have that screen tearing functionality helping you out there with variable refresh rate. Um, this right here, number two, is telling you what display it is. This thing is coded as the QCQN5S, uh, right? So S95C is what this thing is. And then number three is going to be your display specific settings. You Right here, you want to toggle if you want variable refresh rate to work. It does let you know NVIDIA, the computer, Windows. This is not Samsung giving this message. This is the operating system that is Windows 10. Windows 11 will tell you the selected display, which is this, is not validated as G-Sync compatible, but enabling these settings will turn variable refresh rate on this TV, guys. So you want to have that checked. And from time to time, depending on what you do, be it you're changing your aspect ratio, your resolution, you always want to toggle this, check back in this settings to make sure that's going to be active. After you have all that stuff turned on, already had it on, you will see an option for you to apply, as you've seen there, and then you would hit apply. But again, because I already have this stuff active, it's already going to be there. All right. So this is just day two with this TV. Day three, technically, but day two with me actually playing with the TV. And uh, immediately what I'd like to have you consider is that the TV is going to look amazing. This thing looks really good. I mean, it's giving me everything that I expected to get out of it. The larger screen, it gives me like that brightness that I got from the S95B prior to it being changed. And I mean, just those extra features like 144 hertz being there uh, with it still retaining the color pop and everything. Uh, but there's a ton of blue within this. And so, of course, the settings by default are going to be just max all the way the heck out. So obviously you go in and you adjust these according to whatever you want. 
I haven't turned anything or modified anything on here, but uh, besides the warmth, TV is going to be on cool or standard. It's a lot of blue. Uh, normally when I'm watching film or TV, right, or like c movie content or television show content, I'm on a warm one. It's not as aggressive as warm two with the green, but with the gaming, I like for the warm two. It's just a preference of mine. You guys make your own decision. I have a lot of settings in here that I will be going through and changing. If there's enough requests down the road, uh, I'll eventually make some content around that. But it's not the type of content that I make on here. Uh, but I just want to let you guys know that if you just want that really, you know, colorful pop this thing out the box is just turned all the way up like i haven't adjusted any of these settings outside of the warm base i will be making my own changes uh to my liking but for the sake of this video we're just going to leave this here and i just wanted to explain that piece to you all right and so i just downloaded a couple of games from my steam library i do have a large collection of games outside of this this particular library but uh i got a couple of games loaded on here that i wanted to kind of mess around with destiny 2 to be specific because it does a really good job of playing like in so many different resolutions and aspect ratios uh so before i even get ready to load any content up let's just take a look at the uh game bar uh optimization feature on this thing and you can get to that by just holding the pause and play button it'll bring it up immediately and so the first setting you see You'll have a, a couple of different uh, picture preset options. Uh, first is going to start off as standard. You can go to RPG, RTS, FPS, and as you see, it'll change things. Now, I don't want to get into modifying things here on camera. Just wanted to show you that. We'll leave it on standard. It's got a nice warm base. Any one of these that you go to as a preset, again, go and change and modify your picture settings to your own liking. Um, and, and depending on the type of content that you play with, it is what it is. One thing to keep in mind, these options are not going to change your input latency, okay? So that's the most important thing about this particular segment right here in this video. Uh, these are picture presets. Uh, some black levels, you know, some peak brightness, things like that get modified or tweaked a little bit based on the category of games that you might be playing. But you'll make the ultimate decision. You can go original. You can, you can take this however you want, guys. We're just going to leave it standard right now for me. Uh, another cool feature, the uh, screen ratio. Now, what this is is... All TVs are going to operate at a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. That's just your traditional stuff. All, all widescreen or, or, or high definition TVs, at least. Your older, old school, you know, two TVs, uh, the Sony Vega, the, the Trinitrons that I used to have and such. Those were a different aspect ratio, 4 by 3. Uh, so that old school VCR content uh, that is 480i, 480p. Uh, but all of this stuff is going to be a little bit wider. This TV makes it so that you can just kind of go in and you can modify this. 32 by 9 is going to be super wide. I featured uh, the Samsung 49-inch monitor that I had um, a year and a half ago on the channel. It was a super wide. But the 21 by 9 is going to be one of the most popular options from your gamer. Um, and the Neo G8 monitor that I got last year, that 32-inch 4K, 240-hertz monitor, has the ability to do this too. So similarly, you've got this big panel 77-inch that can put you in position where you can get ultra-wide functionality. So once you go and you switch this, the TV is going to do its thing. And then it's going to give you a notice and tells you the first time you change to 21 by 9, set the PC's display resolution to 2560 by 1080 or 3840 by 1600, which is an amazing resolution. 3840 by 1600, in my opinion, is a top dog ultra wide. Uh, one of the biggest opportunities I feel is just some talking points that the uh, quantum dot ultra wide panel that samsung just recently released has is that they chose to do a 3440 by 1440 i don't feel like there's enough pixel density there in my personal opinion that's why that monitor didn't catch my taste but what we're going to do is go back to screen resolutions like we did in the beginning you see it automatically preset back to that recommended we're not going to follow the recommended we're going to go down to 3840 by 1600 once we adjust this we'll give it a couple of seconds see what it does it's thinking and bam we're good there now it says 60 hertz we can modify that because we want to go back to 144 hertz another thing that's great about this ultra wide worked better on the s95b in my own testings at 100 hertz i didn't like it at 120 hertz i felt there was a lot of uh, inconsistencies with screen tearing even if you had variable refresh rate active all right so now we have ultra wide so yes you do got black bars up top black bars down below uh it's an oled panel so things in person look really really good so let's go back to the game optimizer 
We've got variable refresh rate turned on, as you can see from the bottom. We've got our FPS, that stands for frames per second at 144 hertz. We've got HDR, which stands for high dynamic range turned on, and it tells us what our re resolution is. We're at 3840 by 1600, and the input lag is set at the fastest. Listen, guys, this thing is well under a frame, well under 13 milliseconds. Anything well under 13 milliseconds is going to be playable for shooters, fighting games, things of that sort. So this is an amazing TV being the first ever to give you a native 144 hertz refresh rate out of the box. All right, guys. So signing off from the sweet spot feature wall, we got the S95C there. For those of you that was following the content when the 77 inch C1 was here, wanted to told you guys I'd bring some kind of conclusion to you. TV is not blown out, so stop it right now. Right now, we've got better camera equipment coming. This thing looks great, but um, some of you are going to ask me and have asked me about the sound system on the, on the TV. Listen, not my focus, honestly. Uh, better than the S95B, yes, but we have a much more immersive system here. We do have rears behind us. They are bookshelves, but we've got the One Connect box sitting on top of my gaming PC. There's no ventilation hose on the gaming PC, guys. And there are bolts on the One Connect box, so it's not suffering. Normally, it would it would uh, screw on the back of the TV, so it's all good. It's got its ventilation. The PC has been featured on the channel. Uh, he's taking in air in front. He's taking in air on the sides and exhausting on the rear. Uh, a lot of fans inside of there. Receiver below it with the hub for USB connectivity. Got my Oculus, and we've got the PlayStation 5. Just so you guys can kind of see, since this is a gaming video, we do have the Xbox Series X and the Apple TV. That's the latest iteration of Apple TV. These two subs definitely give me great sound. The center, I like it. And uh, just getting you a side look at that TV. Yes, cables are managed and such to my liking. Very enjoyable experience. All right, so I'm not sure exactly what logistics need to go into place, but as of right now, Game Motion Plus is not a feature. Um, I don't know if it's the 144 Hertz. Uh, I know in the 60 Hertz space for the consoles, it definitely works, but this is not something that I would recommend playing. I, I'm, I'm not sure, you know. Uh, I suppose that I could test and see what playing with a 30 frame per second game feels like. Uh, but I know that when I messed around with it on yesterday's video, the portion when I had God of War running, I could feel some more latency added to it, guys. Um, you know, so again, does have the virtual aim point. You can add that right on to make things a lot more simple for you guys. This is a competitive display. You can seriously get down and play on this display. Um, you got a lot of different options, varieties. Let's go to the TV speakers. Let's crank them up. I'm standing at the same distance with the clip mic on me, 100%. Obviously, they're not gonna sound as good. And with the TV being closer to the wall, just letting you hear it. You should be getting some reflections and sounds. This is max settings. This is not loud enough. But it, I think there's some volume there, definitely. Would it be good enough for you? It's an executive decision you'd have to make. But this is where I'm happy at. So there's the setup. Okay, so here's my sweet spot, and there's my TV. Yes, there's a hell of a distance there. Um, you know, this TV is only available in 77 inch. Um, I know your purists, your enthusiasts, your scientists will all tell you, hey, this TV's not big enough. Uh, the discussion here is, you know, would you rather have a larger TV that is a lesser of a TV? Right now, what is the best largest TV you can get? Uh, is it an 83 inch of any kind or is it this? Is it an 85 inch of any kind or is it this? Understanding why you're buying the TV. Um, so I have a RTX 3090 graphics card here. 
even if I put a 4090 in here, which I do own two of those, uh, you know, it would not be enough for 8K. And then 8K slates you back down to 60 frames, 60 hertz. I'm not willing to go back down to that when we've just got introduced to 144 hertz in the 4K space. Uh, so, you know, the compromise for me is to, hey, you know, have this TV and I just enjoy my spot. I uh, shared a community post with you guys with my daughter uh, sitting over in that chair, you know, because uh, this is not just a, a, a single man room. This is a family room. Um, and so works good for me. I uh, add to the fact I do have about three feet here, two feet, two and a half feet. Carpet's a little dirty uh, where I can pull the, the chair up, which I don't need to. Uh, my biggest focus, the point that I'm making here is actually taking advantage of QHD gaming um, in the 144 hertz space. Uh, one of the claims to fame to 144 hertz is lower input latency. I, I feel like there's a lot of people that might not really, really have a firm understanding as to what that is and what it does. Uh, the TV of last year already gave you well under frame of lag. Um, so very playable at the competitive space, but them increasing it natively to 144 Hertz out of the box, no freaky you know, changes to have to be made is really good. It means the latency should be lower. Um, and it means you can play in, you know, not just in the 4K space, but in the QHD space, you know, so that if you're sitting back as far as like I am, you know, and you're playing a competitive game, right? You're, you're concerned more so about um, how fast it's moving, how quick you can react, and the screen being big enough, how good you can see still with HDR. So when you pair in like an RTX 3090 to a QHD space of playing a game like Destiny, Call of Duty, Fortnite, Valorant, all those type of games that you guys might play, uh, you do have a ton of different options. All right, let's get into some casual gaming and let's just have a discussion about this. So this is obviously Destiny 2, we're in the Cosmodrome. Looks absolutely beautiful. Um, I'm hopeful that my TV is, my camera can give you a good enough representation. There's no blooming, there's nothing that's blown out. Um, anything that you're seeing, it looks like that is strictly gonna be my camera and you know, it'll be some time before I can invest into something better. Uh, but just hear my talking points out. Uh, what we're experiencing right now is a very good frame rate. Um, you know, this thing feels awesome. Feels like, you know, I am playing and it's just, it's just smooth. The resolution is tight. We're in 4K. You know, the biggest opportunity for most people with the TV like this, especially if you're playing in a PC space of things, because that's what this video is about. This brief review is about PC gaming, is, is that, you know, you have to make a decision. Do you want one or the other, right? Some of you are gonna wanna chase after that locked 144 Hertz. And depending on the type of, you know, package that you've put together for your PC, you just may not be able to achieve getting that. It just might not be possible, okay? So what I've just done is on the right of the screen, I have implemented a counter. Um, so right here as I'm idle, I'm in 4K. We've got you know this graphics card running um, and we've, we're getting at about 100 frames right there. The 99% are about 70%. Everything is turned on with this game though, uh, might I add. So if I wanted to scale things back and try to get a higher frame rate, cause that's obviously going to be you know, what you're chasing after is getting the highest frame rate so you can have the lowest input lag, be able to respond as quick. You will scale down some things. So you have the ability to kind of like pick and choose. What do you want to do? Do you want to have all the grass blades looking, you know, as crispy as they can? You know, do you want the sun to really illuminate like the sun might be in real life? Uh, or do you know, are you okay with having some of the grass looking fuzzy? You know, you can turn that down and still enjoy that pixel density. Now, sitting as far back as I am, I can tell you guys, I've already tested playing this game in QHD and in 4K, and I'm not gonna say that it doesn't look different, but I'm gonna say that just for me to be comfortable, like in the way that I've aligned my area, um, you know, I can play on either of the two. If I know that I am absolutely trying to chase the highest frame rate, guess what? I'm gonna turn it down to QHD, which is another great option that this TV has. It's an in-between resolution that unfortunately Sony hasn't implemented. Hopefully they will do that eventually, but let's just take a quick look at that. So on the idle in 4K, we're pulling about 112, 112 frames there. And if we wanna get clever, we can drop this thing down 2560 by 1440, that's QHD, keep it in mind, full HD. For those that don't know, is 1920 by 1080. 
Um, very pixelated to have a TV this large, even sitting back where I am, um, you know, not gonna look as good, but let's go ahead and drop this thing to QHD. All right, guys, so discovery has been made, and right now I'm gonna card in the live that I filmed in between me recording this video. It would appear that you cannot do 4K, I'm sorry, you cannot do QHD and 144 hertz. Um, I'm going to you know, edit this video just to kind of make it a quicker transition, but if you wanna see uh, my, my initial findings, again, I just carded in a few seconds ago the live that I did that encompassed it. So the prior transition as I was getting ready to switch to QHD, it just, it just made this weird aspect ratio, almost like an ultra wide. Let me show you, this is what you get. You get this weird aspect ratio. I guess it's 21 by nine forcing it. I'm not sure why, but it's gotta have something to do with the, with the uh, refresh rate. Um, as you can see, the TV uh, 16.9, um, 2560 by 1440 is a 16 by nine aspect ratio. It's similar to 1080p or 1920 by 1080 and 3840 by 2160. Uh, so I'm not sure why, it just appears to be a limitation within this. VRR, HDR, the real-time frame rate counter is right there, spot on with uh, NVIDIA counting at the top right. Uh, the fix behind this is for you to actually go to your window settings and we'll do this on camera. I'm not even gonna cut this part. We're just gonna do this on camera because it's the same thing I did on live. Give it a second. And as you can see, we've got 3840 by uh, the 4K by 1440. Uh, you know, I would say for the sake of video, i would change this but at 144 you can't get anything you can only get 16 by 9 in qhd if you go to 100 or 120 hertz even on windows right so let me just show you if i go 144 it's going to give me this weird cutout like that that's what it gives you if you do 144 in qhd guys uh, so when you go 120, this might be melodramatic, but hey, this is what content's supposed to be about. And I know nobody's talking about this. I feel in a really good space with PC gaming um, and just gaming in general on these TVs. Um, so when I full screen this, now we've got a beautiful 16 by 9 aspect ratio at QHD, right? We are, we are higher than 120. Uh, I'm, I, honestly, guys, I would, I would go as far as to even just turning V-Sync on if you're going to play in QHD, which is a little disappointing. And let me explain to you why. Um, you know, my thought, and this isn't a bad thing for Samsung because nobody's even doing 144 hertz. So this is like a generation one of this type of technology. Uh, but the, uh, the ability to do QHD at max settings at 144 hertz means that you sustain really good graphical fidelity. You're not taxing your system as much by going 4K and dumbing down those settings because 4K is still 4K. You still got much more pixels that you're pushing. It doesn't matter if you turn things down. QHD looks really good um, and being able to play at that highest frame rate is something that I wished would have been a combination. Um, now, whether or not this is something that could be fixed in a patch, in the future, I'm not sure, but as you've seen, even on Windows, when you 144 hertz the QHD space, it gives you a weird block. Um, and when you do it in a game, it forces the aspect ratio to 16 by to 21 by 9 when it's clearly a 16 by 9. Moving on. All right, throwing Tomb Raider in there. It's a classic game, but I actually got this set to the uh, ultra wide aspect ratio. We're not going to do a ton of gaming on here. We'll have more content. Um, going forward on this, but uh, let's just look at some of the graphic options. So again, the resolution set, my recommendation, my recommendation for especially this being a 77 inch, uh, look into doing a 3840 by 1600. It does truly give you like more width on the screen, the panel. Um, and then this is big enough from a diagonal perspective to support that. The refresh rate is at 144 Hertz. Um, V-Sync is turned off. So, you know, what this means is that you 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 will run into something uh, higher right now. I think this game is running at like 200 something frames. This is an older game, so it doesn't take a ton to run it. Um, and then, you know, game libraries are classic. You know, play games like these, you come back to them. I think this is a great game to like test your system. 
uh, because it's still got some pretty decent graphical fidelity. Um, you know, these are just a look at some of the settings. The preset of Ultimate uh, is there. Uh, and then again, when you preset Ultimate, I'm not sure why Shadows is not always turned all the way up, but now we do actually have everything turned up. That's how I like to play best I can. I know the 3090 will scale down on some things, but let's just give it a look. This game looks great. And of course, you can change back. Ooh. You can change the aspect ratio and the resolution on the fly. This is pretty immersive, this screen being so large. and I'm looking at about 190 frames. This, this is gonna hurt. And it's really awesome playing this in ultra wide, man. And I went and switched it to 4K, 16 by 9. So you get a different look at, you know, the different experiences you can get. You're gonna get more, more information on the screen in ultra wide obviously than 4k of course 4k is going to give you higher pixel density but again that's why i said you know if you're going to try ultra wide i recommend trying the 3840 by 1600 it's one of the best uh resolutions you can get when you're using a monitor that's like 34 to 38 inches anything that's going to be larger than that it's going to be super wide and unless you're getting a qhd double monitor um i'm not sure that i would truly recommend it now one thing to be conscious of with this let me just get this turned on right here i'm getting about 50 frames if we go down to settings and this is just like you know general g general um pc stuff you know we turn the v-sync on you can double or triple buffer it and i mean it's going to lock things down it's going to lock things down to that 143 144 right um so now you know it's going to absolutely make sure that you don't have any screen tearing because your frames are not gonna possibly jump all over the place. So you really have to make kind of like an executive choice. Some games are not going to allow you to lock the frame rate down to 144. So if that's something that you're trying to look at targeting, what you can do is you can see if your title supports you locking the frame rate down or capping it, not locking it, but capping it. If you cap it at 144, then you know that your VRR is gonna be stable because they've made, the, they've made this TV stable at up to 144 in the supported, um, resolutions which i didn't test 1080p but for a panel this big it's just too pixelated uh but if you put on like v-sync what v-sync does is it absolutely forces the the frame rate and the gpu uh, uh refresh rate uh, you know all of it to tie in to be more intimate um it does add a little bit of latency but we're talking about something in the ballpark of like you know two milliseconds or whatnot um so not too bad when you're playing on a tv this low all right, guys, so this is going to conclude this brief gaming review of the Samsung S95C. We've got it set up. Um, I put a lot of work in, like physical work into, you know, just getting things cleaned. I had to move the, the LG and I had to do a lot of stuff, but I wanted to just bring you some content and uh, I'll continue to test some things out. Um, it was very interesting to see that piece about the QHD uh, 144. Again, not a lot of people have this TV. And a lot of people won't probably be playing in the space of PC, so they might not even think to kind of check that out and see how that works. Uh, but me personally, like, you know, I've spearheaded talking about QHD at 144 
for me personally, being that I sit back further, even how I started this video all talking about the view distance and how far back I will be, QHD would be the nice medium where I'm not really trying to focus on the highest fidelity, but I'm more so focused on, you know, that rapid refresh rate. That extra makes a difference, it does. So anybody that says otherwise, it's not about what you can see, it's about what you can feel, what you can experience. It's a collective package of everything. And although, like I said, you know, Samsung hasn't slated anything about it being able to do both. Um, it's just something that logically I would think would be possible and it doesn't look to be possible now. However, it's something that probably can be addressed in a firmware, which kind of takes you down that rabbit hole. You know, would you want to firmware update your TV later for that feature? If you're PC gaming, I definitely think you would want to, um, you know, because everyone's not going to be able to afford a 4090. Everyone's not going to be trying to play games in 4K again pushing that many pixels we're talking about 4k is extremely taxing extremely taxing my gpu is howling right now in a good way because you know it makes some noise when it turns up but i got a lot of fans on it i digress um being able to play in the middle resolution is a good thing and even the testing setup i've got right now right now guys i'm sitting like six feet from the tv um where where which is where i have this seat and being able to play in Q, qhd would be a great benefit However, I want to know what you guys think. Leave some comments. Let's have some engagement. Uh, if you have any questions, things you might like me to test out on this, I will. I'm going to be doing a lot of PC testing before I get to the console, uh, just because there's just it's more open source. Puts me in a position where I can kind of try out and test different things that I've been wondering all this time since I got the TV. Now I can do it. I'll catch you guys on the next video. Thanks for your support. Peace, God bless, and as always, say, Max Love.